Hey there, it's Tank Girl, and today I'd like to unbox the Nokia E73 mode. This is pretty much an E72, but for T-Mobile USA. So this is a review press unit. Uh, it might have been reviewed before, although it still has a screen protector on it. But as typical, the box is a little beat up. Anyway, let me uh, give you a quick uh, tour of the, of the box and the phone. So here in typical T-Mobile fashion, you get the manuals on this side and the uh, phone here. So let's have a quick look at it, shall we? So as you can see, it's T-Mobile branded. It's the same keyboard as the E72 with a slight curve and a very awesome keyboard feel. And then here you have the normal keys and the optical D-pad. And on top here you have the QVGA screen, which is, has a hard time focusing on. Notice that they didn't delete the front-facing camera, and this is really exciting because they tend to do that on most phones. One thing I want to point out, though, is that these keys here are plastic instead of stainless steel or aluminum or metal like they were on the original E72, and that they feel a little mushier because of that, but that's about the only major difference in the front. Now, there's another difference, and it's on the side here, on the front side, front edge. Normally, on the E72, there's a little Nokia charger port down here. So you can charge over USB or using a standard Nokia charger. Now, they've removed this on the E73, and you can only charge over USB. Minor thing, but I just wanted to point it out. Uh, on this side here, you get exactly the same layout as the E72. So that means you have a micro USB port right here. And next to it, a micro SD card slot. I believe it comes with a 4 gig card. So here you go. There's a card in there. And then on top, you have the same as the 72, a standard 3.5 millimeter jack for audio with four prongs, so it supports standard Nokia accessories, a power button. And on this side here, you have the volume rocker and the uh, voice command key and then of course nothing else. In the back you have a, uh, let me hold it this way, you have a stainless steel cover which is a more of a smoke color than the original. The little latch release hasn't been changed so it still feels a little on the flimsy side. Let me wait for it to focus there. So it's easy to kind of accidentally touch and open the cover. That's something that was better designed than the E71 but the E72 is the same. And then here in the back finally you have the 5 megapixel camera with autofocus and flash and the speaker. Now this, this camera is really amazing. Like I reviewed the E72 and the E72 camera. I had it for about four months as a review unit and I took some incredible shots with this. Don't, don't let it, don't write it off as just a business phone so it has a mech camera. This is a really imp impressive camera for a business phone. Probably the best I've seen on a business phone. It's up there with the Nexus One camera and some of the N-series cameras. So it's pretty impressive. Um, anyway, let's go on to see what's in the box. So there's a little cardboard divider here. And then here you have a car charger, which is really nice. They provide us a micro USB uh, car charger. And I'll, I'll get back to why in a second. Here you have a standard Nokia um, micro USB AC adapter. You have the headphones, of course. Um, these are the standard Nokia headphones with an inline remote, I believe. I can't really see it here, but let's see. Yeah, I can't see it. And then there is a very, very, very short micro USB data cable. Very short. They've done that a lot on the US models. It's a very short data cable on the uh, X6 as well, I believe. And then here you have a, a carry pouch. Uh, this is looks like the same carry pouch as the, uh, the E72. So this is it for the box. Let's quickly look at what's in the manuals here. Um, so that, there's not much. There's just a single manual, safety and reference. And I think there's nothing else in the box. So basically, this is what the E73 is about. Um, I'm uh, going to put this phone through its paces. Um, probably not going to do a, a full review since it's very similar to the E72. But let's uh, just power it up and you can see the T-Mobile branding here. Sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button there. The power button's on top. 
Yeah, so it's it's a gore. I mean, what is amazing about this is that it's it's a seventy dollar phone on contract, and even though it's not a touchscreen phone, I mean, it'll put it'll put your BlackBerry to shame. It's that good. Um, there's no doubt about it. That's the best. Ta-da! Here you go. You get the T-Mobile song. It's the best non-touch business phone money can buy, in my opinion, for seventy bucks and two year contract. You just can't go wrong. So here you go, here's uh, the main screen, um, and uh, of course, they haven't crippled it in any way, other than, you know, as I said, removing the, the, the charging port, which is a minor thing. They, they haven't screwed up the software. It's, it comes with all the OV services, including navigation, which is why it comes with this uh, car adapter for navigation. And uh, it um, has all of the, you know, facilities of a standard Symbian series uh, S60 version 3 phone. Um, of course, feature pack 2. So, pretty awesome, I would say, um, of a device. Let's, uh, let's take out the battery and I'll show you what's in here. It's the giant uh, BP4L uh, battery that comes with all the, uh, all the, for some reason I can't get it out. There we go. For all, with all the E-series phones lately, um, so uh, you can easily go a week on standby with this battery. So it's very uh, much a business phone type of battery. Let's see what the capacity is. 1500 milliamp hour on a phone that sips power. Um, the, the SIM tray is up here. Now it takes, up, takes a bit of, of work to pull it out. Let me see if I can get it out. And so you pull on this and then you can pull the SIM out. Um, there's really nothing else in the battery cover. Um, so, yeah, I mean, ex it, looks, it looks and feels exactly like an E72, um, and uh, that's a good thing. I think this is one of, as I said, one of the best phones Nokia's made, and of course, it being available now for T-Mobile for so cheap is a pretty impressive feat. Uh, finally, I just want to point out, obviously, there's another major difference between this and the E72, and that makes perfect sense. It's that this is... Uh, designed to operate on T-Mobile's 3G. Um, so it supports AWS 1700 megahertz instead of the 850, 1900 that uh, are standard on the E72. So the E72 would be the phone you'd want to buy if you wanted to be on AT&T 3G in the US. And if you are on T-Mobile, it's a no-brainer. You just walk in the store and buy the E73 uh, if you want that kind of phone. So that's all, obviously another difference. I think that instead of 850, 1900, they went 1700, 900, which means that you obviously still have the 2100 megahertz band for 3G in Europe and uh, Japan. And you have the uh, 900 megahertz band, which is used in some European countries. So it's kind of like the Nexus One for uh, T-Mobile has 2100, 1700, and, 19, and 900, sorry. So just give you a, a quick extra outside tour before I wrap up this video. You know, it feels really premium. That metal rim here, smoked metal, and um, the back is metal. I mean, for $70, it's just really impressive. They've really been aggressive in pricing this. Again, you know, it's a matter of taste. Some people say, ah, oh, it doesn't have a touch screen, blah, blah, blah. I don't understand that, but you have to look at it from a historical perspective. If you're a big Simeon user, this is, a, this is a, an amazing package. So anyway, um, keep an eye on my blog. I'll do an unboxing, uh, proper pictures, compared to some other Nokia phones. And um, I'll try to, uh, I'll, I'll post the pictures I take with it. They probably will be the same as, as the uh, E72 uh, pictures. But anyway, keep an eye on my blog. I'm Tanko. My blog is Tanko Mobile tnkgerald.wordpress.com. This is the E73. Cheers.